being the month of new beginnings, and this being the first Sunday of the month, I just want to talk about what is new beginning, and then we'll do a few concepts, and as the Lord will uh, help us. And I first want us to look at what is a new beginning, or what is newness. The first thing that I came across is that newness is a transformation. I know uh, Pastor Moffat talked about the transformation. And uh, when we talk about a transformation, it uh, means you're changing one thing from one form to the other. And the best example that we can look at is the example of a butterfly, whereby in our biology or science class, we were told it comes from a, an egg, goes to a pupa, then goes to a uh, no, goes to a raphae, goes to a pupil, and then to the beautiful butterfly that we see. But you cannot be a butterfly and then become a, go back to become a, a raphae, or go back to become a, a pupa. Meaning that when you are becoming new, when you are being transformed, you become better and better. The word of the Lord says that we move from one degree of glory to the other. So it means that when we are talking about newness, it is talking about us moving from one degree of glory to another and never going back from wherever God has taken us. When he has taken us, I, we are not going back. We are just going up. That is the newness that we are going to talk about. And here you can look in the book of uh, Romans 12 and verse 12, but you can read verse 1 and 2. Uh, Romans 12. Romans 12, verse uh, 1 and 2. And the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that, uh, what is is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. It means that when we are talking about newness, one thing that we have to know when you're talking about newness is that we must be deliberate. It is not thing, something that we are forced. You have to agree. And that is why Paul writing to the Romans was saying, I beseech you therefore, brethren, in verse 1, present your bodies for us to get this newness we must present our bodies. We must present our minds. We must accept that we are no longer want to be conformed to where we are, but we must give a, a position ourselves in a position where we will be able to be transformed. So when we also talk about uh, newness or new beginning, we are talking about restoration. When you talk about restoration, it shows that there was a place we were in, but whatever happened, we came down or to Kanguka Kutoka, that position. But the Lord now is, wants to transform us or to restore us to the former glory. I always hear in the world of schools, eh? the school world, eh? There were times that um, the Nyeri schools were the best, did you? And uh, when I hear, once in a while, I'm not an educationist, but once in a while when I interact with them, they say that they want to restore the glory of Nyeri schools. What does it mean? That there was a time they were up, but now wako chini kiwango, but they want now to come up. So that is means that if it is, Restoration, and I'm, when I'm talking about newness, I'm not talking about newness of many things. I'm talking about newness in our spiritual life, in our physical life, because I realize that as much as we are spiritual beings, it is important to know that we are spiritual, yes, but we live in this body and we live in this world. The Bible says that we are in the world, though we are not of the world. So it means that as we are living in this world, we must also restore. It means restoring our finances. 
There are some people who are doing so well in their businesses, but they came to down. God is coming to restore those business. Our families. There was a time our families were impact, were contact, uh, were, were together. But sometimes, due to many things, there are some things that have happened. The Lord is here to restore our families, restore our social economic state, restore our emotions that we may become to where the Lord wants us to be. And that one you can see in that Romans 12 verse 1, whereby we are living a holy and acceptable and we are offering a reasonable service. And if you read in verse 2, where we are doing the perfect will of God. And then it can also mean a rebirth. There are so many uh, uh, definitions of uh, newness or new beginning. And uh, Pastor Moffat had even talked about a rebooting, a restarting, and all that. So the key uh, scripture for this is Isaiah 43, 19. So we are going to read Isaiah 43 and verse 18 and 19. That is where we are starting. And I am hoping by the end of today, I will have done a, an intro to that so that um, next time we will be able to do it. The Bible says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a lord in the wilderness and leave us in the desert. Here, when we are talking about newness, we are, mini, we are talking about in verse 18, it says, do not remember the former things. If you read the whole of this book of uh, Isaiah uh, 43, starting from verse 1 going through, which I'm not going to read today, it talks about the Lord telling us, do not fear you. I know you by your name. Uh, and then in verse 18 it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Why? Because uh, as I was thinking about this first, the Lord was telling me, most of us seated here, we always say, uh, there are some people, especially the ones who are my age, eh? we re experience some revival. How many of us have experienced some revival in our lives? The Christian revival. So, what do we say always? During those times, so do you tunasemanga? Tulikuwa tunafa? Tulikuwa tunafa? So do you tunasema? So we are stuck on what was happening and we forget that the Lord is the God of today and not God of yesterday. I know that the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But if you stick on yesterday, you may forget that there is today and there is forever. And that is what happens uh, where we become stagnant. Stagnation, eh? When we become stagnant, it means that we we'll always remember the things of yesterday. And that is why the people who do dams say, because it is a dam, it is usually very contaminated. If the animals come and do whatever they do as they are feeding, they are taking the water, what do they do? All that dirt remains there. If somebody else comes and does something else in a bakiwapi, and those are the things of the former. And that is why the Lord is talking about that he is making levers. Why is he talking about levers? Because levers come and throw. One as if you Levers come and throw, meaning that if there was any dirt, what will happen? It will be diluted as the river goes, wherever it is going. But if we remain in the old things, we remain in the dam. And that is why for them that do geography and tell us, I am not uh, very good in that. They tell us, if a lake does not have a, an outlet, what happens to that lake? It becomes very salty, 
and it cannot even be able to sustain life. Bwana asifiwe. So if you do not allow yourself uh, to have that opening where you can have an outlet. And how do you get an outlet? By doing what uh, we need to do. By talking about God, by doing all that. You will become stagnant and you will become contaminated and you will not be useful to people. I know I've said a very, uh, very serious statement but that is what will happen. So the Bible says, behold, eh, do not, uh, 18, let's go back to 18. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Here, we are not being told not to remember. See, oh, as the queens, we have said, we tumekuja, ku, tumekuja kusema asanti, eh? But, as we remember them, we remember them with nostalgia and we'll tell God, thank you for what you did. But today is a new day. And if you read the book of uh, Lamentations uh, 23, uh, no, uh, Lamentation, I mean, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, Lamentations through the Lord's masses, we are not consumed because his compassion failed not. And then, and the masses of the Lord are new every morning. And great is uh, your faithfulness. And we are saying that as much as his compassion is, does not fail, if the masses of the Lord are not renewed every day, we may have an issue with our lives. And that is why Lord, the, our God, in his own wisdom, he has decided that his mercies will be renewed unto us every morning. Meaning that every day we'll have a newness of life. We'll not live in the days of yesterday, but we'll have a, a newness. And uh, as we continue uh, in that same book of Isaiah, I want us to look at verse 19, what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying that in this newness, when these masses of the Lord are renewed to us, he will make a Lord in the wilderness. What does a wilderness represent? A wilderness represents impossibility. Uh, it will represent that hardship. And um, for the civil servants, there are people who are being given an allowance called, in, called hardship allowance. Eh? I, I, they are given because they are living in a very harsh environment. A desert is a very harsh environment. But it does not matter because even in that hardship, you, because someone may be telling me, Pastor, you are talking about it. Do you know what I'm going through? I may not know what you're going through. But because even if I knew okay, I will try to pray with you, I will do this, but the, what matters is the Lord knows that you're going through that wilderness. And he's saying, in that wilderness, and that is why I am told by the, the, my teachers told me that he'll say, I will even make, meaning this making of a Lord in the wilderness is not an easy thing. It is not easy. That is why he'll say, he would have said, I will make a, a Lord. But he will say, even in this hard thing, the Lord whose mercies are renewed unto us every morning, the Lord who is telling us to be transformed by our renewing of our mind every day, he will even make a Lord in the wilderness. Meaning that you cannot miss the way because the new mercies of the Lord are upon you and he will make a road, a, a road for you. Uh, the other thing that I want us to see is that when we talk about newness, we are also talking about redemption. Redemption, we are talking about forgiveness, and we are talking about a um, uh, promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And um, when we talk about this newness about redemption. The best example I can give is in the book of Ruth. 
and I don't want to read the whole of it because you have to read the whole of it to understand. But we can go through some of it. Let's be given the book of Ruth, chapter 1. I'm not, it has, does not have many chapters. I will not go. I'm just going to brush through it. Uh, it is a uh, book of Ruth. Kindly. All right. It starts here that now it came to pass in those days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. First, uh, two. The name of the man was uh, Limelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Mahla and Shiloh, uh, Ephraim of uh, Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to the country of Moab and remained there. I will not, uh, first three says, then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons, Twendele, and the two wives of the women of Moab, the name of one was Opla, and the name of the other was Ruth, and they dwelt there about ten years. Verse five, then both Mahlon and Shiron also died, and, uh, they were survived, and so the woman survived her two sons and husband. I don't want to talk so much about that, huh? but this is a story we know about Naomi and Ruth. Eh? A lot has been written about it. Eh? But I want us to, if you want, want us to, to talk about a redeemer or redemption in this, uh, from this book of Ruth, eh? we see that when Naomi was left with the two daughter-in-laws, a time came when she had that where she came from, there was food, and she decided she's going back. But now, remember, she went back when she, wa uh, she went to Moab when she had a husband, and she had two sons. Now she's going back when she did not have a husband, and she did not have her two sons. And uh, I know, please watch and say, come Pastor Julius, and I saw me, you will understand what happened. And she only had one daughter in law called Ruth. And when they arrived in Bethlehem, I am, I am just paraphrasing so that we can understand this redemption. Uh, she arrived and she found that um, uh, people are, were harvesting, but she could not harvest because she had not really sown. So what happened? Uh, the daughter-in-law Ruth, eh, if you can read in the third and fourth chapter, uh, told her to allow her to go and glean. Eh? Greening is going behind the people who are harvesting. Eh? And we know the story how Naomi helped uh, Ruth to get herself a, a husband. Eh? And uh, there is a, a name that she said, the, that man that where you have, the field where you are gone, is that is in chapter four, verse mm -hmm. chapter four, verse uh, maybe first, chapter three, Ikisha Hapo. I can't remember the first, but I am to saying that Naomi said, This man is one of our king's man, redeemer, meaning that he is the only one who could have uh, gotten them from the low level. Now they were like poopers, eh? What were Nainda ku? going after people uh, harvesting, eh? And he's the only person who can be able to remove you from this shame to take you to another level. And it was a new beginning for Naomi, if you read, and uh, you, can, you can read the whole of that chapter, and that is one example of a redeemer. The other redeemer that, or the greatest redeemer we talk about is Jesus Christ. Because he died for us, so that we can receive the power to become what? The children of God. And that is why in the book of 2 uh, Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 17, uh, the Bible says, uh, the, the book of uh, 2 Co uh, Corinthians 5, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Why? 
because we have allowed ourselves to have the redeemer, the, the, the one who redeems the whole mankind to take care of us. Eh? We become new and the whole, the all this past and behold, we become new. And how do we become new? By accepting Jesus Christ as our personal savior. And how does that happen? When we agree that we have all fallen short of the glory of God and we ask the Lord to become our savior. I don't want to go into those details, but I know you all know. So it starts for us to have to become new. We must fast as a Christian. We must fast at the cross. Go there and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I come to you. Huh? You remember that prayer we pray? We cannot have newness of life. We cannot have a new beginning if as Christians we do not have the Lord as our personal savior. Then uh, I want to say that um, newness involves surrendering the past to God and allowing him to work, to work in our lives and trusting in his plans for our future. You will not get a newness if you want to do things on your own. In our, in our Christian life, you must allow the Lord to work in our lives. And how does he work in our life? By allowing him to do his purpose, allowing him to do his will, and having, a, it requires a willingness from us, not from God. God has no problem in making us new. But it involves a willingness of us, of letting go the old patterns of our lives. Letting go of our old beliefs. Letting go of our old habits. Letting go of every relationship that he does, uh, our good relationship with Christ. And what are some of these relationships? We all know that, I know we'll talk about relationships. We know there are some of our relationships that are not good, are not godly. Those are the relationships that God is telling us to do away with. And then somebody will ask me, uh, Pastor, if you tell us that we have to uh, go off our relationship, how will we witness? You know, when you are witnessing, um, relationships are very many, uh, are have different categories or levels. There are those people who rate in the inner circle. Sio tunajua hivo. And there are other people you rate. It does not mean that you'll hate people. It means that you love people, but hate what they, what they do. Sawa, sawa. Because we cannot claim that we'll be able to preach to the others when we are in them. Your behavior and their behavior is eh, the same. Will then realize the difference? No. That is why the Lord is calling us into this newness and to avoid some relationships. We will love the people, but we'll hate their behavior. Uh, and I want us now to read uh, 1 Peter 1, 3. 1 Peter 1, 3. I am talking about newness today as we, as we talk about this month, as I'm bringing a, a foundation. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from dead. So it means that for us to be able to get this newness, we must always know that we have somebody who is doing it for us. We are not doing it on our own. Who are we doing it with? We are doing it with Jesus Christ. That is why I'm saying he is giving us a living hope. Uh, if you read it in the, in, the, in, the what, in the new translation, NLT, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, now we live with great expectation. Because without this great expectation, we cannot be Christians. Christianity is about having an expectation. How do we expect? Yes, here we confess with our mouth. 
end, we are living with a great expectation because we know that the, uh, our Lord who died on the cross and rose again for us and gave us hope, he is going to be in for us. And then we are going to read um, uh, the other is Ezekiel eleven nineteen. Today we are looking at what does the Bible say? How do we become uh, new? The Bible says, then I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and take uh, the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. If you read also uh, Ezekiel 36, 26, you'll find the same thing. Here it means that we have to allow our hearts or ourselves to have a different mindset. A heart is a mindset. There are some of us, we have to have the new spirit and the new mindset, the mindset of Christ. What does the mindset of Christ tell us? The mind, uh, mindset of Christ tells us that we will not no longer be conformed to the old patterns. We will no longer be conformed to the things that we used to do. We will no longer be conformed to the thinking and the understanding of the things that we thought we knew. And that is why in the book of um, Jeremiah 7 and verse 17, Jeremiah 7 and verse 17 say, mm, no, 17, se uh, 17 and verse 7, sorry, says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Why? Because this person has been transformed of his mind because he is no longer the same. That is why it says, blessed is the man who trusts is in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. And that is why verse 18 says, for he shall be like a tree that is planted by the waters, which springs out its roots by the rivers, and it will not fear when the heat comes, but it leaves will be, uh, leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the ears of the drought, nor cease from yielding its fruit. Meaning that when we trust in the Lord, when we have this new beginning, now our mindset changes and we will come to pass, uh, uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Because if you read verse 16, is it verse 16? Uh, yeah, if you read verse 6, uh, verse 5, sorry, uh, verse 5 and 6, here is the old us. The Bible says, if we're without Christ, the, the, that says the Lord cast is a man who trusts in a man and makes fresh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, because he shall become for he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and he shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the past places in the wilderness, in a sort rod which is not inhabited. And that is why it says, this is our old, but now, but blessed now is a man whose trust is in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Or there are, first, uh, there are some uh, fashions who say but blessed is the man who trusts is in the Lord and confident the Lord is. Uh, that is when we become new, when we have this newness of our lives. And then um, I want us to read Isaiah 65, verse 17. The Bible says, uh, we are just looking at what is this new thing that the Lord is talking about? This is our month of new beginnings. What is this? The Bible says, For behold, I will create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. When we are talking about the new heavens and the new earth, we are talking about our new mindset from whatever we were doing. Eh? Uh, this is one of the interpretation of the new heavens and the earth. There are many others. So the Lord is saying, from whatever we are looking at things, from our different, uh, our earlier perspective, the Lord is bringing us a new perspective 
and we shall not remember the, the old. Why are we not remembering the old? Because if we were to remember the old, as we have re uh, uh, read in the book of Jeremiah, so we have seen that this person is already cursed. This person already is in a salty past lad. Is that person having any future? If you are living in that uh, Jeremiah se uh, 17, verse 5 and 6, would you have any future? Would you have any productivity? Would you have any reason for uh, looking for tomorrow? No, that is why the Lord is saying that he will make us a new heaven and a new earth. And finally, as we are doing the introduction, uh, today is the Holy Communion. I don't want to keep us for long. Um, let's read 2 Timothy 2, 20 and 21. A verse that I love so much. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy, this is Paul, Paul who is saying, but in a great house, they are all not, they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some of honor and some for dishonor. And then verse 21, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. And this is where now we are going to spend a, a bit of time. Because for us to experience newness, the Lord is telling us, we must understand what kind of a vessel we are. And the Bible says that in every great or in the house of the Lord, there are many vessels. Vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of what? Wood and clay. And some are to be honored. If you read in the NIV, it says, some are for noble purposes and some are for ignoble or common use. I want us to submit, I want to submit to you that in this season of newness, new beginnings, as we are ex expecting to have an experience uh, overflow and fullness in our life, we must realize that we are vessels in this, in the house of Lord, in the house of the Lord. And it doesn't matter what you are made of. Some of us are golden, others are made of silver, others are made of wood and clay. But I want to bring to your attention that it doesn't matter whether you are golden or you are made of clay. What will make you useful in the house of God is your ability to cleanse yourself. You you are our ability to do what? To cleanse our self. Because I, even if I am made of wood and I am not able to cleanse myself, will I experience a new season? Will I experience a new season? Brethren, will I experience a new season? So it doesn't matter what you, what kind of a vessel you are. Because all of us are vessels in the house of God. It doesn't matter who you are. Whether you are golden or whatever. But the most important thing that I want us to think about in the next five minutes is are you of noble or common use or will you only be used for the use of the master? Will we ignore you all? And when I'm talking about we, I'm not talking about me. Is the, will the world really receive you as a, something that can be had? Huh? Everything that matters. But even when they start before people, nobody listens to them. Have you ever noticed that? They have all the money that they need. They have forever. But when they start before people, nobody will listen to them. 
Najua hivyo. So here the Bible or what the Lord told me to tell us. You want to experience this new season as we are, I am bringing the foundation of what newness is. And what kind of a vessel are you? Because in the house of the Lord, all of us are in one of those many categories. Remember that no matter what you are made of, if you are made of gold, you have to go through fire. For you to be clean or to be that pure gold, you have to go through. If you are made of silver, you have to go through. See your new query. If you are made of clay, if you want to have a very good pot, I am told you have to go through fire for you to be had and to be uh, that good pot that you want. But the thing is, are we ready? I know we have already gone through fires and all those other things. But after going through all that, are we ready to have this new beginning? Are we ready to be used are we ready to be cleansed every day so that we can be honorable uh, or we can be honorable or we can be used for the master's uh, to do uh, for the master's will or the master's purpose? Are we being used for the purpose the master intended us to be? Or we are just there, we do not sitaki kutumia hiyo jina. We cannot understand where we are. Yeah? I may be, I'm golden, but I'm too dirty even to be used. Ata ukikuja kwangu, utauliza, is this really gold? Eh? So gold is something that is very nice. You are made of gold, but some of us are made of gold, but ata ukituangaria the mania hiyo, the habu, haiko. Do you want a new, to enter into this new season? Where now, we will no longer be uh, ignorable, but will be used for noble causes? Are we there to be useful for the master's good purpose that he prepared for us? Just think about it. As we start this month, what kind of a vessel are you? Do you want to be used, useful in the master's work? Do you want to be used, useful in what our master wants us to to, to use us for? Do you want to be rejuvenated? Do you want to be regenerated? Do you want to be uh, restored? Do you want to have that rebirth that the master will be able to use you as a young person, as a woman, as we are telling the Lord thank you because of what he has done? Do you want to be used for that purpose that the Lord intended us to be? As a man of the house, do you want the Lord to press you at your rightful position whereby you are useful? Every person will not only look at the vessel, but will also look at the quality of the purposes that you are being uh, used for. Just think about it. Because the Lord says that he is going to do a new thing. And as his mercies are renewed every day, he is renewing our purpose every day. Are you ready to be used of the Lord? Or do you want the Lord to use any other apart from you? In the Bible, there are so many uh, examples of people uh, given another Charles, we'll talk about some of these Bible characters who, in the beginning, they looked very um, ignore, uh, and they were ignored. I can give you uh, one example. And one of the examples is, let's talk about Moses. You all remember Moses in the book of Genesis and Exodus? I'm just going to brush, I just so that you can see how God can make you useful. When you talk about Moses, we know his birth. He was born at a time that Pharaoh did not want any children to be born. 
or any male child to be born. Why? Because the Israelites at that time had reached a time that there were so many and he was afraid. One, the Bible says he did not know Joseph. Two, he was afraid that these people are becoming too powerful and he was afraid that they would overthrow the, his government. So what happened? Moses, he, when he was being born, Pharaoh wanted him to be not a, a, a vessel of use or of honor. So what did he do? Uh, he had commanded uh, that all the midwives should kill all the male children. So if, you, if somebody is planning your death, are you being, are you being uh, served or are you being positioned for noble use? Somebody wants to kill you. Does it mean that you are of noble use? So, and then we know what this whole story, what happened. Uh, the, when he was born, uh, the mother, uh, the, the, the midwives allowed him to be born. And the mother uh, hid him in the river. And the daughter of Pharaoh saw, her, saw him and he loved him. And the, we all know the story how uh, the mother decided to be the, the maid of the, uh, the son. And he grew up like a prince, but he was not satisfied. He thought, uh, he knew from his Noah that he was not what? That was not his use. And then we also know that after he was, he grew up and uh, he refused to be called the, the daughter of, the daughter of, uh, of Pharaoh. And he knew that he was an Israelite and he wanted to fight for the Israelites. And uh, that is why one day when he was walking as a prince in uh, Egypt, he found two Israelites, uh, is, he found an Egyptian beating uh, an Israelite. We all know the story. And uh, he decided to, 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 to intervene. And what he did, he killed the, the Egyptian. And when he realized he had done that, he buried him. And uh, the, as he continued, the another that day he came and he found two Israelites fighting. And he, when he wanted to intervene, they asked him, you want to also to kill us as you did the, the Egyptian? And then he knew, Maisha yangu hapani, ni magumu. And then he, that is when he ran away. So Moses, as much as he was born or he was brought up, in the Paris. In the Paris, he was not of a noble use. See how you query. He found himself not because now he was running away because when the Pharaoh knew that he had killed an Egyptian, he would be against him. So we know all that story. But we also know that as he went and as he married and as he started uh, being a shepherd, he met with God. And that is why he was able to see the new beginning. His new beginning came when he saw the burning bush that was not being consumed. You can read that in the book of uh, uh, Exodus. And that is why he had an encounter with the Lord. And that is why his, when his life started being used as an instrument of noble purpose. I am saying this to show that there are so many people who started. When you started, you are not noble. But when you go on, you become noble. I want us to consider where did we start becoming instruments of noble use in the Lord? Have we started? If not, today is the day when we can start becoming instruments of noble use that we can be useful for the map master and we can fulfill God's purposes for us. I want us to start and ask the Lord to make us, give us a new beginning. I know we are, we are doing so many things and um, we may think that uh, the end has come for us or we cannot change, but the Lord wants to give us a new beginning. The Lord wants to give us a new beginning. If he was able to give Moses, let's ask him to start with us. Whatever vessel we are, let's ask the Lord to help us. 
that we can become useful in his house, useful in this country, that when people see us, they will not despise Christ in us, but they will say, surely, this man or this woman knows the Lord. Let's stand and ask the Lord to help us, because it is only the Lord who can give us this new beginning. By ourselves, we cannot do it. It is only the Lord who can do that. Our oh, Father, we thank you. I pray that, Lord, you may search our hearts. You may search our minds. You may search us, O oh God. That in each and every way, Lord, that we have failed you. Lord, where we have dwelt on the past. Lord, where we have not seen the goodness of your mercies every day. That, Lord, you will help us to see these new mercies. That, Father, you will use us as persons of honor in your kingdom, in your purposes, O oh God, that your name will be glorified. I want to thank you for each and every of my healer, Lord. Thank you, King of Glory, because I've shared what you put in my heart. I pray that, Lord, all of us will be persons of honor in your hands. For this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name.